Hello, my dear students, and welcome to your online class. This is your teacher, Cosme Robalino, and today we are going to talk about chemistry and chemical reactions. That's right. Our topic today is chemical reactions. <clears throat> I'm going to show you, excuse me, I'm going to show you a typical reaction that takes place in the kitchen. But please, please be advised, do not conduct any kind of experiment in your house. Do not go to the kitchen unless you are next to an adult who can monitor and supervise you as you conduct any kind of activity in the kitchen, no matter what, okay? So uh, first we are going to uh, look at this um, animated image. And then um, we're going to see the, uh, the reaction, right? The chemical reaction in more detail. So here we have something simple, right? Uh, this is just a reaction between vinegar and baking soda. But as you can see, there is a camera above the reaction and there is one on the side. So it's just simple vinegar and baking soda. But please, please be very careful because even the simplest experiments can uh, be uh, dangerous. So do not do anything of this if there is no adult next to you. Okay, so let's set our objective for today. And then obviously we are going to talk about our key concepts. So the objective today is very simple. We just need to identify what kind of electric uh, chemical reactions take place in our everyday life, right? It can be in our own body, it can be in our surroundings, or it can either, even be in the universe. So these three levels are going to be mentioned throughout this presentation. So before we do that though, let's go to our key concepts, right? So the first key concept is that chemical reactions are occurring all the time, all the time, constantly. Um, whether or not we can uh, perceive them, whether or not we are aware of them, these reactions take place at all times. Chemical reactions take place when two or more substances interact. So that means one is not enough. And their chemical bonds break apart and reform or form again. So we've been talking about bonding, right? Ionic bonding, covalent bonding. Okay, so these bonds break, right, break apart, and then they reform into something different or releasing energy. And we are going to talk about energy in a moment. Many chemical reactions are very useful or even necessary for life on Earth. That's right. Um, our bodies and all living creatures undergo chemi chemical reactions um, in nutrition and respiration, the two elements that make life possible. Now, the energy changes always accompany chemical changes, right? Because without energy, um, life wouldn't exist. So this energy is needed to start reactions by breaking molecular bonds. Yeah, let's uh, remember that there is bonding among uh, atoms, but certainly there is bonding among molecules too, right? Okay, and we are going to see that in a moment. Okay, so the first thing that we need to see today is that matter around you changes all the time in several ways. It can be um, so tiny that we will never see it, or it will. It is so evident that there is no way to ignore it. Now, uh, take for example, when you are preparing a meal with your family, as I was telling you in the kitchen, right? 
Um, the food that you have uh, in the kitchen, could be in the fridge, um, changes the size and shape when you are cooking it. No? So for example, if you take butter or if you take chocolate with room temperature, without any kind of heat, it melts, right? Um, then liquids such as water, milk, evaporate and, and change into gas form. For example, if you boil, if you heat water, obviously it boils. And different ingredients mixed together and dissolve. So for example, if you add sugar to your milk, then the sugar will dissolve and you will have a solution, right? Okay. Um, and we are going to see this process of melting chocolate in just a second. But first, uh, let's say that changes in size, shape, form, or state, state refers to liquid, gas, solid, are purely physical changes, right? We already saw the physical properties, which means the ingredients keep the same chemical composition. The atoms are not interacting, right? and energy is not released so uh, on the space on your uh, on the left part of the screen you are going to see a chemical change right um, with chocolate look at how fire right melts the chocolate and what is the result a beautiful dessert. The ice cream is just underneath, right? But again, do not conduct any kind of experiment in your kitchen unless you are supervised. Okay. Next, I'm going to show you what happens inside the oven when you are baking cookies, right? So these high temperatures produce a reaction. There you go right there is uh we're going to see what is happening to the carbon dioxide right it's uh, trapped inside the dough so that's why your cookies are fluffy but we are going to see that in just a second um so other changes to food during cooking or in this case baking occur on a molecular level uh, for example, the color of food may change. The change of amino acids with sugar, for example, give cooked meat its characteristic brown color, and new flavors and others may appear. Sure, you take out the steak from the fridge, you put it on a frying pan with oil, and sure enough, the color will change, but also um, the smell is going to smell different and it's going to look different and finally it's going to taste very different so imagine how cooked how i'm sorry how meat or uncooked meat raw meat tasted before fire was discovered can we imagine that no of course not but that's what happened right so these are examples of chemical changes uh, many chemical changes in cooking make food more eatable. As bread is baked, or we can talk about these cookies, uh, these delicious cookie, cookies being baked, a chemical reaction releases carbon dioxide, which is then trapped in the structure of the cooked dough to make it light and fluffy, right? So the fluffiness comes from, from the trapped carbon dioxide in the um, particles of dough. Okay, so chemical changes or reactions occur when two or more substances or reactants interact. So uh, as we said before, one substance is not enough. You need minimum two. So um, what is the result? Well, molecules of the reacting substances substances change and also the formulas change we're going to see that in, today in a process called uh, photosynthesis we are going to see um, the chemical reaction some chemical reactions break matter apart um, so 
for example, if you remember when we connected our battery to uh, well to the to the lead and then we connected that to the water. Remember that? Well, we saw oxygen bubbles, right? So uh, the electricity, right? This energy that was going through the water split the water molecule into oxygen and hydrogen and we could see we were able to see the oxygen bubbles right and other reactions combine matter this is how for example rust forms on an iron nail when the nail is exposed to oxygen and water and that's what we saw last week remember the iron uh, rusting over a period of time between, I remember it was something like March until October or November. So it was over six months, right, that the rusting process took place. Here we can see uh, another kind of reaction where um, we have a solute, right, and a solvent but we don't have a solution, right? We only see kind of a precipitation here. And obviously as a result, we can see these beautiful colors, which is like a show in itself, but, um, but we don't see a solution, a traditional solution. Next, we are going to see what I was talking about. This is the process of photosynthesis where you have three elements um, let's say going into the plant one uh, the element one number one is the energy from the sun the element number two is the carbon dioxide and the third is the water and minerals underground carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere and obviously the light energy um, is also in the air um, so what are the what are the two products? One is the oxygen that goes into the air; it's released into the air, and the other one is glucose or sugar. Okay, so this is the photosynthesis, a very simple um, process, uh, a chemical reaction that you may already know. But let's express this um, in a chemical formula, right? So the, we know that the formula for water is H2, uh, H2O and the formula for carbon dioxide is CO2. But let's talk about the chemical reactions before we talk about the sugar. It says here that chemical reactions happen around us all the time and many of them are very, very useful. Uh, for example, uh, uh, for example, when your cookie, uh, when you cook, sorry, when you cook food, it takes more flavor and makes some types of food eatable. And chemical reactions of combustion keep us warm, right? Uh, for example, when you turn on the the heating system, it generates electricity in power plants and power motor engine. So without combustion, right? Without this energy, uh, many things wouldn't work. Other chemical reactions such as photosynthesis and respiration are equally important, but not obvious. It's not obvious because we don't see it, right? Uh, or we don't analyze it. So without these chemical reactions, there would be no life on Earth. We wouldn't have plants, we wouldn't have animals, we would have nothing at all. So as I was telling you, let's express the photosynthesis process with formulas. So we have here two atoms of hydrogen with one atom of oxygen, which is the formula for water, right? And then you combine that with carbon dioxide, which is one atom of carbon, and two atoms of oxygen. Okay, so what is the result? Sugar. And what is the formula for sugar? Ah, well, you need two, or you get actually, you get two atoms of carbon, two atoms of hydrogen, and six atoms of sugar. That's the result. 
in sugar gives you energy. So when um, herbivores eat the plant, they obtain sugar. And when the carnivore, when the carnivores eat the herbivores, they also obtain uh, energy in the form of sugar. Okay. So there would be no universe as we know it without these uh, physical and chem physical changes, right? Physical changes and the chemical reactions. I mean, it would be totally, totally different, right? Imagine plants without photosynthesis. Elements would remain uncombined. That means isolated. So uh, imagine iron not interacting with oxygen, it wouldn't rust. So the world wouldn't exist the way we know it today. Now, excuse me, energy changes <clears throat> always accompany chemical reactions. Um, it's always the case. That's always the case. Generally, initial activation energy is required to make a reaction begin, but not always, right? You need certain, uh, certain temperature, certain amount of energy. Some chemical reactions give off energy, they release energy, and other reactions need to absorb energy from the outside in order to continue because without energy, there's no way to go on. So for example, here we have the sun, right? And these are just pure chemical reactions. Without chemical reactions, there would be no solar energy, right? And we know that the sun is going to die one day. These chemical reactions are going to stop, right? Because the fuel will come to an end. But that's still a long, long time from today. Okay. So um, I'm going to show you a video showing uh, or featuring a chemical reaction. around us is a chemical. Now what did Miss Jackson say? Something about chemicals and matter? I think. Okay then class, please pay attention. Anything made of matter is a chemical. That's it. Anything made up of matter is a chemical. Now all I have to do is remember what matter is. So let's start with the fridge and see what chemicals we've got in here. Milk, apple juice, water, and veggies. They're all made up of chemicals. And all these chemicals are made up of different types of molecules. I remember this bit about molecules. Molecules are made up of atoms. And atoms are made up of even smaller particles. Hmm, I wonder what would happen if the molecules in one chemical interacted with the molecules in another chemical. In chemistry, a reaction happens when two or more molecules interact and a change occurs. This is called a chemical reaction. We start with two or more chemicals and a new product is created. Sometimes we can see or feel the reaction because chemical reactions often produce heat or gas. So let's have a go at creating a chemical reaction. Here I've got some vinegar and some baking soda. Warning! This experiment is being filmed under adult supervision, as all experiments should be. I guess you could say they're ingredients to my recipe. Of course, in science we don't have ingredients. Instead, we call them our materials. The two other materials we need for this experiment are a bottle and a cork. Instead of recipe, we say method or procedure. In science, we do experiments to test out our ideas. But first, we have to ask a question. So we have a focus for our experiment. Like here, we're trying to see what happens when we put vinegar and baking soda together inside a bottle. What do you think will happen? Our ideas about what might happen are called a hypothesis, or sometimes it's called a prediction. Do you think it'll turn green? 
Do you think it'll smell like eggs? Do you think it'll melt the plastic? Do you think it'll explode? Then all we have to do is test it with an experiment. Once we've done our test and recorded our method, we can actually begin to observe what's really happening and write down our observations just like real scientists do. Then we have to draw our conclusions. This means explaining what happened and why. It's important to keep all this information so we can go back and do our experiments again. In science, we can only come to our conclusion once we've tested everything, making sure we've taken everything into account. So, I think we're ready to go. I'll add the baking soda. Then I'll add the vinegar. Now I'll put the cocoa. Let's say that again. We add the two chemicals and a reaction takes place. There's the bubbles of gas, the gas is building up, and... Did you know that there are chemical reactions happening inside your body? The food you eat is broken down in your gut, and one of the products of the reaction is... That's right, gas! Okay, guys. I hope you like the video. Thank you very much. This is the last thing I'm going to tell you. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the experiment um, with the girl. Um, and remember, remember not to conduct any kind of experiment unless you are under uh, adult supervision. Okay, thank you very much. Don't forget to ask any kind of questions when we meet uh, in the um, in the zoom chat take care and we'll see you later